morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We're going to open our meeting uh, of uh, the Planning and Community Development Committee meeting uh, of this morning. Uh, can, uh, as a starting point, can we just get a motion to approve the minutes of our prior committee meeting? Uh, Supervisor Hogan, seconded by Supervisor McGowan. All those in favor? Uh, yeah. First of all, I'd like to uh, uh, welcome an honored guest, uh, Eliana Taylor, who is Mike Wiles' granddaughter. Eliana, welcome. Thank you. We, we, need, we need all the help we can get in this room, okay? So thank you for your attendance. Uh, uh, Wayne, you're, you're up to it. Okay, uh, we have two uh, resolution requests for committee consideration. Um, the first is to uh, enter into an MOU with the Town of uh, Queen Ferry and other participants in the grant award that is awarded to the Town of Queen Ferry. We will do the administration. Chris will do the administration, um, and the county will uh, receive a, uh, all the MOU is for twenty thousand dollars. The county of which we would provide uh, five thousand in kind. Well, it says forty five. Oh, okay, it's five thousand. Yeah, five thousand in kind. Um, so I'd ask the committee's uh, consideration of that. Can I just get a motion to get that on the floor, please? Uh, Supervisor Hogan, second by Supervisor Wild. Any discussion? Uh, Ms. Bramer. Mm. What's the what's Queensbury's match? Forty five hundred. Each the towns are forty five hundred, I think. And ours is forty five hundred also or five thousand? Five thousand. Okay. Are you done, Ms. Bramer? Are you why don't we go to yeah, Supervisor Hogan uh, and uh <laughs> 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 Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. This, this is for the development of a watershed management plan, watershed action plan. Um, so in terms of management of the watershed beyond this plan, that I guess is probably a, a, a key component of this plan is to determine that, yeah, determine that information. So this is for the development of the plan, not for... I'm not sure if I understood your question, but... You okay, okay. okay. Uh, Surprise or wild. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I see... On the third page in, <coughs> there's a revised budget and the original budget. Sure. Uh, have we lost some funding or something like this to make uh, this happen? So this is a 2015 grant to the town of Queensbury. It was on behalf of the Watershed Coalition. Um, the original grant was written for $486,000 total, um, but the grant was mm -hmm. never executed with the Department of State because the match was not clearly identified. So with working with the town, the state, the Lake George Partners, um, we were able to reduce the budget to 89, a total cost of 89,000. Um, we cannot make the other 300 and some odd go away. Um, so it's still available if there's other services that are needed. Um, but in, in terms of what we need to work with, it's the 89,000. So. As a follow-up, Mr. Chairman, so have we reduced the scope of what we're trying to do? Obviously, we must have done that, right? For this component, no. No. Okay. There, there were, for other activities, yes. But that's a town of Queensbury issue, not here. The he works for the town of Queensbury, not for the county. <coughs> we're just providing some administrative services, and this component is still intact from what the application had. Supervisor Strau, Supervisor Bramer, and Supervisor Leggett. Okay, if, if I can. <coughs> Chris, uh, Chris has kept this thing alive. Of course, it started back with the, you know, Watershed Coalition and Dave Decker, and uh, you know, you know, the trying to unscramble everything that occurred in the 17 years of the watershed is yet to be done. Um, but in any event, Chris Belden, to his credit, kept us alive. So what it is to do is to put together a, a master plan for Lake George, and as Chris said, an action plan. In other words, not something that's going to sit on the shelf, it's going to be something that the municipalities around Lake George give them clear direction. 
in any of them. So Chris narrowed the scope from the original scope, but the original scope is essentially the same. But we think we can get it done a, a lot less expensive than Chris does. Chris will do the administration of the grant. And the way we're setting up, but it has yet to be approved, is that the Lake Champlain Lake George Regional Planning Board will be the administering of the of the the task. Chris will do the grant work. Lake Champlain Lake George Regional Planning Board would do the study, and the study would be done in conjunction with all the stakeholders uh, in and around Lake George, including the business people and the environmental organizations and so forth. The Queensbury would be the sponsor, but. Queensbury would be the sponsor. This has got to make sure that everyone is willing to put some skin in the game if you want to go ahead with this, including Warren County so and these other organizations. So we get those MOUs together saying, listen, in order to meet the match, because it's a 50-50, Chris has kind of organized it like this, and we do an MOU, and it just says everyone's willing to do some skin in the game. It's nothing that's going to kill anybody, 4500 bucks or what have you. But, uh, <coughs> it's a, just an obligation from everybody, so it makes it easier for us to go forward knowing that we we have the obligation from these people for this amount. We can meet the match. We're going to try and meet the match many other ways, using personnel and other things, but just on the surface, we need this. If I could just add a point, uh, Supervisor Stroud. The original, so the, the, the grant was originally written to subcontract this out to a private consultant. Uh, for $206,000, which is what they made available. Um, we're using the Regional Planning Board. They're a municipal entity. Um, I think that also helped bring the, the cost of the project down. Um, but by and large, the scope of work, the work plan, if you will, um, really hasn't it's been slightly modified, but, but not, not, not considerably. So um, I don't know if that answers the question at all. But it, it leads to another, but I will yield the floor to whoever's next. Supervisor Bramer. I was going to ask about the Lake Champlain, Lake George Regional Planning Board, because I see their role in it, but what about the Lake George Park Commission? What is their role in all of this? They will be um, part of the committee, uh, presum presumably. Uh, we cannot use um, Park Commission's time and max towards this uh, project. They're state entity. Um, they will be any stakeholder that we can identify in the watershed that is willing to participate. How do you see that um, playing out, though, their participation? It will be, I think they'll be happily involved. I think they have the best interest in being involved. Yeah, I, I guess from my perspective, I'm, I'm thinking the Park Commission should be the one who's setting out the master plan and figuring out a work plan for all of the water, Lake George watershed. They don't have, yeah, I mean, I, that's, I, that's what's going to be here. Um, I could let that speak to that. Um, the planning board has planning staff. Um, they've done these types of plans before. Not to say that folks in the park commission haven't done that, that done that kind of work. Um, that's just how we. That's just how we kind of laid things out with meeting with the stakeholders since the beginning of this year, um, trying to get this project cost down to a reasonable amount. Um, so, all right, if I may, this was an inherited project that, as Supervisor Stroud said, was you know, previously. Um, in the works. The, and, and as Chris mentioned, so the Park Commission cannot receive state funds through this program. So therefore, they're going to be involved in all the discussions. They're going to be uh, part and parcel to it, but they can't be the entity doing it and receive the funds. I know, but that's not my point. I mean, shouldn't they be doing it? I mean, should we be also, maybe John wants to talk to me. We don't want to have, we also don't want to have a top-down plan. This is going to be where all interest groups in the lake have an opportunity to help you know, the future of Lake George. So, um, but they will be, you know, Dave Wick or somebody else from his office will be involved with this project. Maybe John and you can uh, maybe chat offline or John wanted to add more to it? Or Well, I can add to what Chris has said in that the Lake George Park Commission doesn't have the personnel to be able to and it doesn't really fall under their umbrella anyway, if you look at their mission statement. 
Now, are they going to be a stakeholder? Are they going to have an input? Are they going to help us do the action plan as much as they can? Yeah. But should they be the leader? As Chris explained, they can't. <coughs> Supervisor Leggett. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Essex County and Washington County, are they involved in this watershed management plan? Not, with, not, not regarding match, um, but we will be making outreach to those communities to participate in this plan because Essex and Washington are part of the watershed, so we can't do it without them. <laughs> Great. So we have a motion on the floor. Uh, can we just, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And opposed. Great. Next, uh, next resolution, Wayne. All right, the second is to transfer some funds in the GIS budget from uh, contract to uh, equipment. Um, this is to update our, uh, yeah, what? Um, our GPS equipment receivers and to add capability uh, rather than contract out. So um, again, there's a request to transfer $5,290 that's in, contract, uh, that's in contract over to equipment. Okay, can we get a motion to get this on the floor? Supervisor McGowan, second by Supervisor Leggett. All those in favor? Not no. Before all those in favor? Some discussion. Yeah. Uh, this is an addition to the GPS uh, equipment you already have. Yeah, since our, um, you know, since however many years ago it was that we purchased the our existing GPS receiver, uh, the use of smartphones for doing GPS has um, come into <laughs> Vogue, I guess, uh, the capabilities are now to uh, there to enable pretty much anybody who's got a smartphone to collect GPS data. Um, but in order to get, for our purposes, this is for collecting primarily infrastructure data, in order to get the accuracy to a level that um, is usable, you know, for uh, the various different departments of public works, um, we need to get a booster that will improve the accuracy of the data that you collect with the cell phone. So this is to purchase that booster that will work in conjunction with cell phones. So kind of just keeping up with technology advancements. Good. We have a motion on the floor. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, opposed. Uh, before we maybe go just a little further, I just wanted to mention uh, uh, yesterday in terms of uh, Talk of the North Country, uh, a spectacular crowd. Uh, last weekend, the Balloon Fest, the weather cooperated significantly and just got to uh, work down there with uh, Jim LaFarre. It, uh, so a great, great outpouring of, of people. And it's just a s special event for, uh, for our community uh, and adds to the, uh, I think, the overall quality of the tenure, the perception of uh, Warren County and Glens Falls to, to be involved and uh, see such good public support for for the volunteer groups uh, in our uh, in our community. So, would uh, highly recommend the spare ribs from the Morgan House in Glen Falls. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I would I would recommend them heartily. So, very good. The uh, moving on for discussion review, the presentation of our proposed budget. Okay, um, included in the packet is the budget um, information. Uh, met with the budget committee, went over it, there was one minor adjustment that's reflected in this information. Uh, I think the key thing to look at um, is the second page of my memo. Um, the bottom line is the department budget will decrease by a little over $7,000. Um, and the 8021 budget, which is the planning department, actually is up by 1300 but the GIS budget is down by almost 8500 So when you combine those out, it's, it's roughly 7000 uh, and some change that is a decrease. Um, I wish I could take credit for a lot of it, but um, it's really, um, some of it is in our contract reduction and the rest is in the point eight, the, um, you know, current benefits for the uh, county of Sands uh, in action savings. So, um, <coughs> we're currently administering uh, a little over $8 million worth of grant funds. Um, roughly 38 projects are in some stage of completion. And that's you know, pretty much uh, what I have also put in here is some future budget considerations that go past uh, the 2020 budget, just some things to keep in mind. Um, I've, we're going to 
capital improvement plan, um, we've identified a number of smaller projects that the communities have identified, but they have not really taken to the next step. They have a, an idea of what they want. Um, I had talked with the budget officer about the potential to include roughly $100,000 to take you know, five or six of those and move them through a feasibility study such that they then have numbers that we can take and look at funding opportunities. Um, right now, it's whatever somebody guesses that it's going to be worth and whether or not those certain projects are feasible. Um, so we've asked, asked have a reserve funds for that. Um, probably not next year, but the year after we've asked uh, to engage uh, another senior planner in the office. Um, at some point, a number of us in the office are going to be uh, exiting state right, so we need to look at that as, as in the future. Um, 2022, we'll probably also see uh, an increase in our point eight. Right now, our junior planner is covered under the, her family's health care. At that point in time, uh, she would age out of that and, and be under the county's insurance. Um, and then the other big one is in 2021 or 2022, uh, the state will more than likely fly the county again for aerial imagery in the past. We have uh, participated in an enhancement of the resolution of that to the tune of sixty to seventy thousand um, dollars. That would be a decision for the county to determine whether they wanted that enhancement. But in order to make the resolution suitable for all the uh, emergency service agencies, the 911, the public works, you really need that enhancement uh, of the resolution. Um, Sarah and I have talked, there may be a grant opportunity uh, to offset that. We're going to look at that. There's no guarantee on it. Um, but those are future considerations that I just didn't want to wait until they jump out at us and, and you know, trying to look down the road a little bit. So uh, at that, you know, if you wanted to talk specifics, we can go through this. Um, so. and Mike. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, thanks. Um, Wayne, nothing specific. Uh, but I would, um, let me go back. I, I've supported the things that your team have done. I've been impressed with First Wilderness and some of the trails. If there was one thing that you could ask for this year, what would it be? I, I think, quite honestly, it's that $100,000 capital. Reserve. For the capital? Yes. Because I think, based on, on the chairman's request, we've uh, gathered a lot of information on county and local projects. Um, and the, the breadth of those is really significant when you look at all the infrastructure needs. And, um, and as I said, in order to really avail yourselves of all the funding opportunities that are out there, you need third party documentation. It can't be us saying it's this, that, or the other thing. You need a third party to come in on their letterhead and say, we've looked at this, it's feasible, these are the estimated costs. And then, that's the only way we're going to move some of these forward and address some needs out in the communities that, that we're looking at. And, and I think that's a critical component. I'm, I'm in support of that if we can find a way to make that happen. Okay, thank you. Claudia? I'm, I completely agree with you that we have to have that information to move project forward. I guess I'm thinking about the step prior to that. Uh, do we have a county master plan that we're developing with respect to all of these things that will be in the infrastructure? Because how will we identify strategically and rationally what projects really should be using this hundred thousand dollars to start moving them forward? I mean, that's what I would like to see us put some like data behind some objective data behind what what does our county need and how do we move forward and what projects should we be uh, should we be actually pursuing? Uh, I know Ryan is working on putting the, the overall plan together and um, hopefully we'll have some discussions on, on that very issue. Uh, I think the plan needs to identify how you're going to move projects forward. Is there going to be a, uh, a committee with, you know, selected individuals that would then assess the readiness of these, the appropriateness of public dollars? Um, that, I still, we're still getting a handle on the actual need, um, but I don't know, do you want to talk about that at all? Or yeah, can so, I, can I just respond just quickly, Chairman? I mean, uh, with all due respect to Ryan, he's, he's great at putting the numbers together, like as we've seen with his sales tax plan, but I, it seems to me that we need like an interdisciplinary team that is going to look at the county, 
aside from this giant list of infrastructure projects that everyone wants and needs, what, what, from a higher level bird's eye view, are we looking at it at the county? And then we can boil down, down, down. The last county plan was done in 1977. Well, there yes. we go, Wayne. Yes. We have said I think we can agree that needs to be updated. Yes. We have said over the years that we would like to see that, that <laughs> done. It is not a small task. Right, I know. Right. I know. One part of this is the capital improvement plan, and I think that's a key component. Um, but when you look at all the other uh, needs and services that are, that are out there, um, you're talking, <coughs> I'm, I'm going to be very blunt, you're talking a multi-year look at everything. Yeah. That it's yeah. not going to be something done overnight. Right. I think this I think is that's an immediate uh, uh, thing that we can wrap our arms around and uh, we should move forward with that. But I don't disagree. I, I, I would like to see the county board support to say let's do a county master plan mm -hmm. or, or action plan, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, But that's going to involve a lot of interdepartmental, interdisciplinary uh, review and oversight and um, it's no small task. Discussion back and forth. Yeah, I, I, I know that, but I think it's important. We've got millions of dollars of things we need to... If, if the Board of Supervisors says that that's important and you want us to do it, we'll work on it. But until that happens, um, well, what no I'll take that motion. To, to that. <laughs> uh, no. I don't think we need a motion. And, 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 and again, I, uh, I don't think we... Uh, uh, at, at this point in time, um, maybe maybe at our next committee meeting, uh, we can uh, talk about it and come up with a, a, a potential uh, resolution, vote on it, and and, and kind of put the supervisor's wild suggestion to to work, uh, rather than throw a motion at, at Frank this morning to to look for a hundred thousand dollars on the spur of the moment. Uh, why don't we just uh, maybe take a moment and pause, reflect, and discuss, and and come forth with a you know, a suggestion. Do you want me to speak to the status of this? Uh, yes, yes, okay. please do. I'm sorry. All right. So um, just the status of where we are with the capital improvement plan, we have received feedback from all of the towns with their projects, and um, we've updated the, the um, project, the capital improvement plan with that information. And I think our plan is it'll go kind of go um, hand in hand with our multi-year, five-year, multi-year plan. Um, once we've quantified all of, and again, it's all the information from the towns as well as Warren County, so as Wayne very astutely said, it's not a small task. It's, it's a very big task. Um, so now it's going back into that data and kind of defining it a little bit more so we'll make sure we're comparing apples to apples as we're looking at it. Um, but at that point it will be, and I don't know what the intent, I, I believe the intent is to have a committee that will look through that because certainly one person it won't be defining what the, um, you know, what, what your highest needs are. But it, it it's a valuable tool because in one spot um, the planning department can see all of the, um, all the different needs of the county. Um, that are out there and as uh, funding opportunities come up they'll be able to address those. So I just wanted to add as, as Tammy said um, you know uh, she and I have been working on this together for the last several months uh, I know, you know this is also on Ryan's um, plate so I think we're moving toward getting to the point where we're ready to present this to ev everybody and um, discuss it further. We're not there yet. As Tammy mentioned, we have some apples and oranges in here right now and we need to figure out how to sort through this very large amount of data that we collected and kind of um, divide it into categories that make sense for further discussion. So that's something that's happening between Tammy and Ryan and myself and at a future date we'll be ready to present this in more detail to everybody. But we have collected, as you can see, a very large amount of information, um, and we thank all the towns for participating and getting back to us on that. Uh, the, uh, Wayne, the, the, the issue of visual imagery and, uh, uh, has always amazed me in terms of the professionalism of Warren County and, and their capability of uh, producing documentation, which certainly helps in public safety, but as, as well as, uh, you know, from a, a person that's used it from a real estate perspective, to take a, an oversized map and to be able to pinpoint traffic generators, uh, 
educational institutions, uh, medical facilities, and, and do that in a very precise uh, way, which enables the recipient of that information to come away with a, a much enhanced understanding of, 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 of what the issue really is in terms of a piece of real estate or in terms of public safety. So, so that's important. All well, thanks to this person sitting right here. Well, it's it's an it, we I've I've used Washington County uh, and Warren County is generations uh, uh, ahead of uh, of Washington County in terms of that uh, that capability and ability. So it's it's first, it's truly first class. Okay, we'll take that. Yeah. Thank you. Sarah, did you have any more as it relates to uh, first world in this social media? Yeah. So I, I'll just say I know we're short on time, so I'll just take a very few minutes here, but I wanted to talk briefly about, um, you may remember a few months ago, we came to you with a, um, we had put out an RFP uh, for social media um, management for the First Wilderness. Um, there are also a couple other components for um, marketing that we'll talk about next month, um, but we had, I believe, Julie in purchasing told me that this particular RFP had the highest response out of any RFP ever issued by the county in its history. So we had a lot of great proposals um, to review and we selected Advocate. And so we started the contract with them um, end of June, beginning of July. It's a one-year contract and so far we've been completely blown away. They're working with Sidekick, both local um, entities with people who live locally um, and we're, I, I've been so, so, so impressed um, by the quality of their work so far. So what I wanted to do is just take a few minutes to talk about um, the social media components uh, that Advocate and Sidekick have been working on and then also talk about how the individual towns can kind of help to push this forward um, and what would be helpful from you guys. So. Um, this uh, funding came from um, a smart growth grant via DEC. We also had some additional funding through one of our uh, VOS, First Wilderness, local waterfront grants. And you may remember we got a little bit of additional funding from um, the occupancy tax money, which funded a different part of the project, which I think you'll also love, but I'm going to talk about it next month so we don't take too much time. So the contract runs from July 2019 to um, June of next year. And the components, the social media components of this involve managing the visitgoreregion.com website. This was developed by the town of Johnsburg using funding um, that, that they put together at the town level. So they hired a consultant, I think a couple years ago, to visit to develop this visitforregion.com website. Um, however, once that project was finished, they didn't have anybody on staff at the town who was able to maintain that website. So this contract involves uh, keeping that website up to date, as well as developing a weekly blog post um, that's posted to that website. Also, it involves Instagram and Facebook posts to both Visit Gore Region and First Wilderness. So uh, three of the four of these social media entities were new creations that advocate, uh, created a Facebook page for Visit Gore Region. Um, they updated the First Wilderness Facebook page to look a lot better and then they created Instagram accounts for both Visit Gore Region and uh, First Wilderness. So we went through a design process. We wanted the two accounts to be complementary, um, but have their own look and feel. So came up with fonts and uh, graphics and colors to kind of tie them together, but both make them, you know, be their their own thing. Um, so our new Instagram first wilderness account. Um, there's been a post a week since the beginning of July covering a wide variety of topics. So far, just in those first couple months, we are up to 146 followers. Um, they've done some metrics and, and uh, kind of figured out what people are being drawn to and liking and commenting on. So one great thing is that um, they're highlighting all of the events in each of the towns. So you can see there's a Stony Creek Mountain Days Festival. 
uh, they've actually visited a number of these events as they've been occurring and taking fantastic photography. They have professional photographers on staff, so they do a post before the event, in many cases go to the event, take great photos, and then post again after the event. So I feel like this has just been a phenomenal way of uh, driving people to helping people learn about some of these events, especially our millennial population who is very heavy users of Instagram. Thank you, Chris. Good Here's luck. Here's the yep. um, Visit Gore Region Instagram account, so you can see slightly different colors, similar, um, you know, similar kind of look and feel. Um, the in in uh, this account in particular, the historic photography has been pretty popular. And you can see there's a few comments in here trying to identify different buildings from that historic photo. You might recognize Cafe Sarah on there. So we had a Facebook page, um, First Wilderness had a Facebook page that we posted to intermittently. Uh, over the summer we do our hike of the week, but during the rest of the year not, we're not so good about posting to it. So they've been taking that over and posting weekly to it. Um, grown our following from 400-ish to about 528. They're doing also doing itineraries uh, for each of the towns, which are kind of fun. So a list of things to do in each town, um, highlighting different businesses and recreational opportunities, and uh, it's it's I think it's been super great. Is Grant Lake in the first wilderness corridor? Yeah, Corican. Well, we're in the process of adding it. It recently became eligible because of the inclusion of um, the Scroon River. Um, as an eligible water body through LWRP. So Chris is actually, Chris and Amanda are working with the town on developing the necessary plan to be an official part of the First Wilderness. Um, so the Visit Gore so Region Facebook page, yes? Sorry, what was the Gore Region Instagram? Oh, great, yeah. <laughs> it's um, Visit Gore Region is Instagram and Facebook, and then First Wilderness. Facebook and Instagram. Um, so the Visit Gore Region Facebook page, brand new, 39 followers. Uh, Advocate and Sidekick have done a great job of tagging um, photos and businesses, so they've been able to get additional followers that way. Um, and I, what I think is actually the the best component of this particular portion of the grant is they are writing a weekly blog post for visitgoreregion.com. Um, they have a fantastic um, writer on staff and she's done all sorts of interesting topics. Um, so we have a couple articles on on uh, art galleries, she did an article on back to school in which she interviewed a bunch of kids heading back to school. Um, this great one on what locals love, she interviewed a bunch of people who live locally in the town and asked them what their favorite things are. Um, this one I found to be very interesting for little known facts about the town of Johnsburg, at least one of which I definitely did not know before. So these are what really, really, um, that it was the the inventor of the um, particular type of beagle. Um, <laughs> so this, the birthplace of a unique line of beagles. I don't know if anybody else knew this, but patch beagles were first bred in North Creek in 1896. Wow. Who knew? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> um, so this is just going to be, by the end of this year, this is going to be a fantastic collection of local interest articles about our region. Um, so what would be super helpful from here on out for the towns is if you can spread the word about these things. The more followers we can get on Facebook and Instagram, the better. So if you are on Instagram, if you're on Facebook, if you can follow visit Gore Region, follow First Wilderness, that helps everybody. And that's it. Any questions? And thank you. Craig. The best thing that we can do is, is promote who we are and what we do, and this is right in line with Thank you very much. Yeah. So here's here's the grid of the posts on our, our uh, 
First Wilderness Instagram account. You know, this is a extremely attractive looking list grid of pictures here that really gives you a feel of the First Wilderness. And same with the Gore region as well. So. Sarah, follow. Go ahead. Yeah, I think Sarah, I, the uh, yep. you're, I, I think highlighting something very important, and, and that's the the power of photography. And can a photograph, in and of itself, tell a story? Uh, in driving in this morning, uh, you know, eight in the morning, coming into the parking lot, I see these flock of geese uh, on 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 county property, just doing their thing, you know. And it, uh, I said, man, that that ought to be a photograph and part of this whole. Uh, scenario here so yeah. so okay yep includes our portion so you're up bed thank you <laughs> morning 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 Um, it is specifically town of Johnsburg, but um, the, all the towns That's are a small being region. the small <laughs> region. It was yeah, it's a town that a town initiative thing. Uh, but the first wilderness is rotating through all of the communities, so and you could always call them and see if you can get in on it. <laughs> good, good morning. Just uh, wanted to hit a couple of highlights. One of the interesting things that uh, developed out of a survey which came from the Census Bureau uh, that we had talked about uh, in, in other uh, meetings uh, was the designation in uh, small and metro uh, SMAs. And small metros are 100,000 to 350, which is yeah, Glens Falls it. Metro, which is Glens Falls in Warren County. Washington County and the northern part of Saratoga County. That represents we're one of the smaller SMAs. That becomes 100,000 to uh, uh, 300,000, 350. Uh, and then the middle size is 100,000 to, uh, or 350 to 1 million. So in that uh, survey, it showed that Glens Falls in the small metros ranked seventh, again, Warren, Washington, northern Saratoga, with nearly 49% of all small businesses owned by women in this area. Uh, that's a significant amount, and I, I think that mm -hmm. that uh, is something that um, the papers have uh, brought out in the uh, past, but it's something that we should focus and take notice of, um, and at the same time recognizing uh, there continues to be a disparity in terms of uh, equity pay, uh, Approximately, there's a distinction of about 81% uh, women get paid of men as workers. And for business uh, communities, uh, they represent uh, about uh, 60 to 75% of the pay of uh, men owning that same uh, business. Um, also, it is not evenly uh, distributed in terms of the types of businesses that women are involved with. You don't uh, find women involved in the industrial areas as much. You don't find women involved in the investment areas. So again, those are kind of areas that gives us little uh, to working with the state and so forth to encourage women into uh, looking at some of these other areas uh, to become engaged with in our particular uh, region. But also this is a good point for us to uh, direct our marketing and our local development corporation uh, more so with some of the women. And some of our most recent uh, loans to the LBC have been to women-owned uh, businesses. Uh, and uh, as an example, someone was mentioning this morning that they were at the Thurman uh, Burlap and Beams for a wedding which is a women-owned uh, business uh, in the area of loan for the LDC. Another in the North Country, of course, uh, is our goat cheese uh, ladies from the uh, town of uh, Thurman and, and so forth. So it just is something that uh, I, I think that statistics sometimes uh, is kind of boring. In other areas, it's something uh, enlightening. I think this is enlightening in the area. We had asked before, including myself, how many, what is the percentage of women-owned businesses in uh, the our metro area, 
I would not have said 49% uh, of interest in, uh, in a particular area. Uh, another thing that has just uh, occurred is the 2019 uh, ESD is always about a year behind uh, through their uh, reports. And again, uh, breaking down the uh, just bounces back and forth, doesn't want to stay on the tourism side. But it ba basically just shows the breakdown of uh, tourism uh, in our particular area. The Adirondack area, and again, the designation of the Adirondack area is uh, Warren County and to the north. Uh, unlike other designations, Washington County is not included in that. They are included in the capital region. Uh, for some uh, reason, but basically in 2018, travelers spent uh, approximately $1.5 billion. The heavy spending, as you can see on the right-hand side of that chart, lodging uh, at 36% and food and beverage at the bottom at 22%, and also uh, seasonal second homes, which we know is recognizing, particularly in the northern part of Warren County, is significant uh, activities in this uh, particular area as uh, well. And what does this mean in terms of, jeez, uh, this thing is mucking around here this morning. Well, I'll stay on, it's not going to show me. Uh, this, this page on uh, tourism uh, spending, and we'll pass, John, why don't we pass this out, or you already did pass this out. You can see on the second page of that the amount that Warren County represents 42% of the region's tourism sales uh, with $629 million in direct tourism spending uh, that occurs in uh, Warren County. So uh, by significant percentage, Warren County leads the way in the uh, tourism uh, in the northern part uh, of our counties, which includes Essex, Clinton, Franklin uh, counties, and Hamilton counties in that uh, particular uh, in our particular uh, area. Other activities that EDC is involved with uh, is the continuation of working uh, with the city on the uh, South Street uh, project. Um, we are uh, working with uh, web graphics uh, on two fronts. Uh, bouncing here. Uh, won't touch it. Uh, number one, in the sale of their building, uh, they've had two to three uh, inquiries uh, due to the fact that the building is in good shape, a good size uh, building, uh, as well as with the uh, employees, uh, approximately about 75 to 80 employees uh, in the area. Uh, there have been some job tours conducted by the Department of Labor and uh, also uh, working with EDC and uh, Pitch Paper has been up there and uh, one of the medical device uh, firms is uh, looking to contact uh, employees uh, in this particular uh, area. So the bulk of those employees have indicated uh, that they are desirous of uh, working uh, at jobs they're not ready for retirement. Approximately eight, ten people are going to be uh, retiring in that particular area. But it's, again, really just off of exit 18 in a very uh, prominent, favorable spot for uh, continued growth along that exit 18 uh, corridor in the uh, town of uh, you know, Queensbury uh, in, in the area. Also, uh, we are uh, completing the preliminary uh, stage uh, of our exit study. We have uh, completed 18 and 19, uh, town of Queensbury, uh, and uh, we have moved uh, northward to uh, the top exits in Warren County, 26-25 and uh, we'll be meeting in the coming days uh, respectively with the town of Chester supervisor and the town of Orkin supervisor to review the preliminary uh, data uh, and information so that we then can uh, revise any comments suggestions and then take it back uh, pursuant to the directive of the uh, respective towns in uh, Chester and Oricon and then we will move south uh, into uh, Lawrenceburg uh, along Route 9 in those uh, particular areas. Just wanted to... Uh, Supervisor Bramer, did you have a question? Is that stuff online once you get these little... Oh, yes. Of the, okay. Yeah, once, once, we, once it's uh, reviewed by the respective town supervisors to see if there's any uh, additions or supplements or revisions, uh, it will be placed online indicated it will be preliminary because the, the thought will be uh, led by uh, Craig and, and, Sup and, and Chester is to uh, their next step is to involve the planning board and may involve the uh, Chamber of Commerce as to how they want to proceed so that would be designated as preliminary uh, Claudia and the same with Matt 
and go forth uh, from there because there may be some adjustments. We have worked, uh, we were fortunate to uh, work with the town of uh, Queensbury in utilizing uh, some of their uh, staff from GIS, thank you John for that, um, and putting together some preliminary thoughts as well as talking with the respective towns uh, as doing this. The purpose of this is so that we can identify in conjunction with the towns appropriate properties that are uh, zoned properly uh, the type of infrastructure that it has, the types of utilities that it has, is a three-phase power to that, what type of, uh, you know, telecommunication uh, we have in the respective area, the zoning, the condition of the roads, how far off the exit. A number of our inquiries that are being received in the North Country uh, specifically state nearby access to a major highway. Our major highway in this area is Interstate 87. And, and therefore, and I think you can attest to the growth beginning at exit 18 and uh, at, at 17, that growth is coming, that uh, the development of these areas, whether it is just warehousing or whether it is commercial uh, retail development, is off these areas. As we go farther north, there's kind of going to be a change in the types of uses that would be available uh, in Horicon and Chester, but it's very important uh, for us to have the input input um, from uh, the local planners and the communities as to how we want to portray this and provide that information. So at the end of the day, in the conclusion of this, these reports will be available to the county planning department, they'll be online, they'll be available to the respective towns in their planning department and so forth and use this as a guideline. And it may come about that there may be pieces of property in there that uh, understanding the restraints of APA, we may have to go back and see if it's possible to do a little bit of rezoning and, and so forth in that particular area. And that may also um, cause the respective towns to perhaps add additional requests to the county through your infrastructure capital fund uh, that may come about in terms of extension of water lines um, and, and so forth like, uh, and also repairs of water lines that uh, Chester is having uh, experiencing problems in the in the hamlet of uh, Pottersville right now, which they've applied for a grant through the uh, through the county in a particular uh, area. So we just wanted to highlight that we are f uh, continuing our EDC uh, uh, upgrade, and also there are new uh, recommendations and guidances. There is not any straight legal positions yet by the state and the federal government for ADA compliance. Uh, with your website in terms of having uh, your websites accessible for those that are hearing disabled or those uh, that are unable to uh, see and those things are not in regulation yet uh, but uh, as an example uh, for IDAs under the new requirements at beginning in January they have to be streamlined uh, live streaming or uh, taped it will be required in that piece of legislation to have ADA compliant in terms of uh, what I just outlined in terms of hearing and uh, sight in those particular areas that does add uh, some cost but again it gives an opportunity for those uh, to have access to that information. Um, also in terms of uh, technology and uh, we are updating our strategic plan uh, after five years. We've completed uh, phase one of the pathway corridor um, study. Um, that report is online, uh, Claudia. And the next step uh, is to uh, seek some state federal funding um, in which we will be uh, meeting shortly with the uh, Department of Transportation in Albany, uh, accompanied by uh, Supervisor Strau and uh, others to uh, in Albany, John. You have that on your schedule. Thank you. Um, also, uh, as we had mentioned at our prior meeting, uh, we are undertaking a study with uh, Chazen uh, to examine the feasibility study uh, particularly on the four lots under option by uh, EDC to Warren County uh, in terms of the outcr uh, outcropping uh, the wetlands in that uh, particular area and also to look at the lot lines now to see if based on these there needs to be some adjustment that would require us at some point uh, to go back to the Town of Queensbury Planning Board uh, to uh, review and that study hopefully will be completed by the uh, end of this uh, year. Chasen is on site uh, and they are uh, out there walking, they'll be walking uh, very shortly with DEC on the delineation of the uh, wetlands once again which has changed 
since they were delineated uh, back around 2000 and 2001 um, in the area. Also, I uh, just wanted to uh, highlight some additional uh, areas uh, in this area. As outlined, you have a copy uh, of that on the report, uh, particularly one of the items that uh, we're looking to uh, work closely with the Warren County Planning Department and uh, Pat Tadish uh, is in the fact that the uh, LDC is providing $10,000, Warren County LDC, out of the housing component for uh, affordability study and EDC is contributing $10,000 for this affordability throughout uh, Warren County. Uh, Queensbury had a jump start on this. Uh, they certainly will be uh, partnering uh, in these particular areas as, as well. To look at that, uh, everybody is uh, awaiting the announcement uh, from Albany uh, as to the level of funding. I think Mayor Blaze is setting the record to the amount of announcements and uh, postponements on the uh, schedule, but uh, hopefully uh, good news will arrive shortly to assist the uh, village. We all know the story there that uh, there is a great need and the uh, bulk of the uh, users of the uh, sewer system or the lack of sewer system in the area uh, is by tourists and uh, there should be some recognition by the state of New York and just outline the amount of impact that tourism has uh, in our uh, area. Um, it skipped around here. The tax credits was renewed and again Andrew Meter uh, is uh, head of the uh, Adirondack Film Commission is uh, undertaking uh, in working with the several prospective uh, films as well as a new TV series uh, to be shown on one of the uh, networks. The old days of three networks plus Fox and a few others is, is long gone uh, with the amount of uh, requirements for product from Netflix, uh, from Amazon and so forth just opens the door and window for more opportunities for films in our uh, particular uh, area as well. Some of our objectives uh, going forward in the area is to continue and to advance uh, Warren County uh, in a number of particular areas as I've outlined uh, here this morning. Uh, EDC uh, funding, uh, we are requesting uh, stabilized uh, funding at the level of uh, $300,000. Uh, you can see the prior history uh, with the uh, funding aspects of the EDC and for the LDC uh, $50,000 in our particular uh, area here. Upcoming um, later this uh, in October, beginning tomorrow, uh, we will be um, Jones is not standing here. We will be uh, talking with uh, part of the uh, New York State uh, Canal Corporation, uh, SUNY at Adirondack and others in terms of the Canal Corporation uh, as well as the workforce of development uh, in our particular area. And final note, I had the opportunity to meet with the new chair of the Warren Washington uh, IDA uh, last uh, week and to discuss ways where we can potentially have some collaboration uh, in the areas of uh, marketing uh, our uh, region uh, together as, as partners in particular uh, areas and we'll be having more follow-up with uh, Dave uh, or uh, Dave O'Brien. Uh, Matt uh, continues to work 24-7 in other areas here so uh, congratulations on your uh, soon to be retirement from IDA <laughs> <laughs> and continued success in the uh, other areas but uh, Dave and I had a good uh, conversation and again Dave is uh, double uh, hitting with also being chair of Lake Champlain Lake George uh, Planning Commission so that is a uh, rundown of some of the activities there and I apologize for the technical thank you uh, thank you very much Ed I would uh, concur with you that uh, Mayor Blaze is uh, probably one of the more effective and charming uh, uh, mayors uh, in, 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 charming in, much more. <laughs> in, in the country. And if anyone can uh, get a, an extra nickel out of uh, Governor Cuomo, I, I would think Bob Blaze is uh, certainly the man to, uh, to do that. So and we recognize that there are other, many other lakes in, in uh, New York State that are in similar peril. Um, and, and so forth, but obviously we uh, in Warren County, bright place, uh, Lake George is the top priority, the queen of the lakes uh, in, uh, in, in our area, but I know lakes like Skinny Atlas are looking very closely at what transpires with monies to uh, Lake, lake George. Well, let's, let's hope that, uh, was it next Monday, that uh, 
he the mayor has his uh, announcement I, I think so so it, uh, oh, today. it was supposed to be today and it was postponed to the last minute <laughs> oh okay interesting interesting I, I should I wouldn't take that necessarily as being a negative toward the grant money I, I think it's just a matter of scheduling I know okay. one time I think he realized we're all going to be at this <coughs> very important when, when is it rescheduled right. for do we know there's been no date there's okay. been no date for rescheduling but I think one time they were looking at the date that Mayor Blaze was enjoying one of his top lifetime careers by uh, throwing a ball for <laughs> strike oh. not strike but ball forward to a home plate when he pitched at Fenway <laughs> Park two weeks ago right. that was a great, great. highlight and recognition right. uh, that Phil Moore Right. provided the mayor blaze in uh, Boston he's got a pretty good right hand too it just kind of kind of took a little float there but he, he <laughs> no bounce he's trying no. to knock a ball that's <laughs> 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 good uh, well thank you for for that uh, is there anyone from the public that w would wish <laughs> to uh, <laughs> make any comments uh, that being said can I get a motion to adjourn uh, supervisor wild second by supervisor Stroud we are adjourned okay. Okay.